Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. All right, who's ready to read the last two chapters of Ada Lace, Take Me to Your Leader? I am. I'm curious if Nina gets back on the ham radio, and I sure hope she does, because when you talk on the ham radio from Earth, you could find yourself talking to us astronauts, on our, like on our ham radio. Let's find out. Chapter 7, The Creep Factor. After Nina left, Ada tried to get a hold of the woman with a weather balloon, but she didn't have any luck. The girl in Marin wasn't around either. Then Milton tried to reach her. Kilo Delta 8, Papa Kilo Romeo, are you there, over? Kilo Delta 8, Papa Kilo Romeo, this is Kilo Delta 86 Echo, come in, please, over. Ada, I know you're home, I saw you go inside, over. Leave me alone, Milton, over and out. Ada switched her radio off and tried to read. Then she played with George for a little while. She got him to go into Elliot's room to bring back her microscope. She didn't even really want to use it. She was just bored and avoiding Milton. Elliot didn't even seem to notice George. He was too busy going on an undersea adventure with Mr. Pickles, so she recorded a ghostly howling sound on George. It took a while to get the sound right, but then when she played it back, it sounded delightfully weird over his tiny speakers. She sent the robot back into Elliot's room with a command to play the sound 30 seconds after arrival. It worked perfectly. Woo, sang George, woo. Ada peeked into Elliot's room from just outside her own. He was pressed against the wall, staring down toward George, who was hidden under the corner of Elliot's bedspread. Dad, my room's haunted! Ada ducked quickly back into her room. Mr. Lace ran upstairs. Elliot, what's wrong, buddy? There's a noise, a ghost noise, said Elliot. Ada listened from just inside her doorway. She heard Elliot's comforter swish as Mr. Lace searched for a ghost. It's just George, but you're right, that sound is spooky. Maybe there's something wrong with him, said Mr. Lace. He's haunted, said Elliot. Ada, Mr. Lace called. Ada sat at her desk and tried to look like she was reading. Mr. Lace walked into her room holding George. Ada tried to keep a straight face, but burst out laughing. She was so pleased that it had worked. Mr. Lace knew immediately that it was a prank, and he didn't think it was funny. Please leave your brother alone, he said, or there will be consequences. Yeah, said Elliot, hiding behind his father. He was glad his sister was in trouble, and Ada was annoyed. If only she'd been able to keep her cool. It was just a joke, she thought. Couldn't anyone just take a joke? Then she remembered Milton. That's just what he had said about his prank. She had never really liked Milton. They were practically enemies from the moment she moved in. But somehow he was almost a different person over the radio. They had found something that they both liked, and they didn't really need to compete over it. It worked out better when they cooperated. Ada switched on her radio. She tuned into the frequency where she usually found Milton. She took a deep breath and pressed the bar on the mic. Kilo Delta, 86 Echo. This is Kilo Delta, 8 Papa Kilo Romeo. Are you there, over? Well, 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 if it isn't Ada, over. For once, she wasn't annoyed by Milton's voice. How's it going, Milton? A few days later, with a little help from Mr. Peebles, Milton and Ada arranged a time to talk to an astronaut in the International Space Station. Ada wrote down a list of questions. Milton said he was going to wing it. Ada wasn't sure how to feel about that. Would he be the prankster Milton, or the helpful ham radio Milton? Time would tell. Ada and Milton had been having fun for hamming it up, as her father liked to say, but she still missed Nina. Even though they still walked to and from school together, still sat together at lunch, and still chatted online, Ada had a big portion of her life that she wasn't sharing with her best friend. So she invited Nina over to talk to NASA. It was on Thursday night after dinner, so they had to get extra special permission for Nina to come over. Milton and Mr. Peebles would be on their radios at home. Nina still didn't trust the radio. She sat on the bed looking through a magazine while Ada scanned through different frequencies. The time crawled by. Do you really trust Milton not to mess it up, said Nina, or joke around with make-believe aliens or pull a prank or make fun of me? I don't know, Nina, said Ada. He's Milton. You always have to be on the lookout with him a little bit. Or a lot of bit, Nina, said Nina. Ada paused on a ham frequency where two kids were singing Three Little Birds to their dad. George switched on and started playing his own version. Ha! Nina laughed. George's favorite. Mine too, said Ada. I think it's a good sign, don't you? Maybe, said Nina. The kids said goodnight, and the radio was silent. 
But you know, if aliens come on, pretend are real, I might bolt right out the door, right? I mean, I might not be able to stop myself. I'm pretty sure there won't be any aliens this time, said Ada, but if there are, we'll get through it together. Chapter 8, Making Contact It took some time. They had to wait until the space station was directly overhead in order to connect, but when they finally did, it was surprising how close the astronaut sounded. She might have been in the next city rather than 250 miles above Earth. The astronaut they spoke to was named Sandy. She had been on the space station for three months. Mr. Peebles let Ada, Nina, and Milton do most of the talking. Sandy, this is Milton. How do you get oxygen to the space station over? Well, Milton, we can actually make it up here. Believe it or not, we just take water, which you probably know has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atoms, and we separate it to get the oxygen out, over. Hi, Sandy, it's Ada. Do you use electrolysis, over? Yes, that's exactly right, Ada. We pass the electric current through the water that separates the oxygen from the hydrogen, over. Sandy, this is Milton again. How long are you up, over there, up there for, over? I'm lucky. I have another three months. The missions vary from a couple weeks to six months, and I got one that was on the longer side, over. There was a long pause as Ada tried to pull Nina toward the mic. Nina was being shy. Ada was afraid that Milton would hog all the time if they let him, so she jumped in. Sandy, it's Ada again. What are you up to there now, over? We're collecting all kinds of data about the Earth. Temperature, climate patterns, weather, pollution. It helps us get a sense of Earth's health. Finally, Nina jumped in. Sandy, this is Nina. Can you see San Francisco from up there, over? I can. Cities are beautiful from space, like clusters of Christmas lights. Nature can be pretty amazing, too. Believe it or not, I can see things like great, the Great Barrier Reef sometimes. You can see pictures of what we see from Space Station on our website, over. Nina again, do you ever get lonely, over? A little bit. I have my colleagues here, and I get along with all of, with all of them pretty well. We all feel excited about what we're doing, and I get to talk to people like you and my family and friends. But it's a strange feeling, seeing your home planet from above. It's like looking at the moon or Mars from Earth, but instead it's a place where you're born, so you feel a little more attached to it, like it's your responsibility, and you want to protect it. So I do miss my home. I miss all the paths I used to walk near Boulder when I lived there. I miss the smell of the air and how the creek water feels on my feet. But up here I have the opportunity to study what makes those things possible and how to keep them from going away. That was a long answer, I guess. Anyway, I'm glad I get to play a little part in helping monitor the Earth's health, over. Sandy, it's Ada. How do you monitor the climate patterns, over? That's a fun question. We actually released a swarm of little satellites last week. N Nina's eyes grew. For a second, Ada was afraid she might flee the room. Each little satellite has a different part to play. They are mostly monitoring how much radiation is coming into Earth's atmosphere versus how much is leaving, over. Sandy, it's Arnold Peebles. Thank you for talking to us. Good luck up there. We're rooting for you. Over and out. Nina looked at Ada. The swarm, said Nina. It was a swarm of little satellites. I must have heard them talking right when they released them. Right, said Ada. We must have been lined up just right that night. So the space station must have been directly above us. No trees to block the signal. And I woke up at just the right moment, said Nina. And they were sent to help us, not invade us. So it's a little magic, said Ada. Nina smiled. Ada opened her computer to look out at the space station pictures. She thought it would be fun to see the Earth as Sandy described it. Wow, there's Mount Vesuvius, said Ada. The cities are pretty. Look at the Nile. It's like a glowing snake, said Nina. Yeah, said Ada. She liked the way Nina described things. Ooh, look, the city looks just like a campfire. Hey, there's San Francisco. Which picture do you think is the best, asked Ada. I like the Himalayas and the Sahara Desert and the Scandinavia at night. How can you pick a favorite, asked Nina. It's all beautiful. It sure is, said Ada. After Mr. Lace had taken Nina home and Ada was about to turn off the radio and get into bed, Milton called one more time. Ada, are you still up, over? Ada was so tired she thought about ignoring him, but she was kind of curious about what he had to say. Ada, 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 are you there, over? Yeah, Milton, I'm here. What's up, over? I made a gimbal for my little camera, you know, so it doesn't shake too much when it's on the kite. I'm thinking about flying it in the park, maybe tomorrow. Do you want to join me, over? Ada didn't answer right away. Ada, are you still there, over? Sure, Milton, I'll join you. See you tomorrow, over and out. Well, that is awesome because they got to contact the astronaut on the space station. And maybe I'll answer a couple of those questions for you 
in case you don't get me on your ham radio. So do I ever get lonely? I don't get too lonely up here on the space station. We have five other people here, and uh, it's really fun to talk and get to know everybody. I've been here for about seven months now, and one of my favorite things to do is to look back at our Earth, and we see how fragile it is. My favorite thing to look at on the Earth is the Great Lakes in Michigan. I've never been there. I grew up in Washington State, and I lived in New York, and I lived in Hawaii, and Alabama, and Texas, but I've never been to Michigan, and so maybe I'd like to go visit one day. My other favorite place to look at is the moon. Because when I look at the moon, I realize, you know, we're all the way up here in space, but we're only 250 miles above Earth. And the moon is even farther than that. It's like 250,000 miles away. And uh, I realize that we're really far away from home, but we're still relatively close. The universe is so big. And our, our Earth is like a little spaceship that we fly all the way through the universe with all the other humans out there. So we need to protect our Earth. If you have any other questions that you want to ask, then maybe you can ask and see if you have a neighbor or a friend or a teacher, or maybe your library has a ham radio, or maybe you can get qualified on the ham radio. And like Ada Lace and Nina, you can call us on the space station and ask all your questions. Thanks for joining for Storytime in Space. We'll see you next time. You know, ham radio is surprisingly impactful, and I say it's surprisingly because you sort of feel like it's only, a, you know, it's a small amount of training and all the training that you do, um, and you're told a little bit about it, and it's like I got a whole bunch of things to do. I might do a spacewalk. I might do, you know, grab a visiting vehicle for the first time. Like, do I really have time for this? And it's five minutes on your schedule. And we would just zip down, fly down to the Russian segment, turn the radio on, and then start talking to a group of people. And it sounds like only 10 kids, and it's sometimes the radio clarity is not great just because of the fact that you are working on ham radio. Sometimes it's super clear if you're right over them. Um, and so you have the questions a little bit beforehand just to so help you a little bit through it. Um, and so you go through it, and then you get a report about how many people were at that event and how long and how much preparation those kids took to actually understand ham radio and work with it. And I felt myself getting choked up every time I would read one of those reports. And, and, and I was like, oh my god, this is great. I didn't realize that like maybe a thousand kids are at an event. <laughs>